Are you recording this? Switch, switch, switch. To me, as an options trader mindset, I'm like, that doesn't make sense because you're not giving these strategies time to work. He's giving the synthetic strategies all the time in the world to work for him. But when it comes to switching into cover calls, you hold them for a day or two and then you're out. Because that's what happened when it opened. I thought when when they released Alti on that Thursday and I checked Friday uh, and they had all shares, they opened up new covered calls. I was like, wow, if this is what they're going to do, you know, this is going to be up there with Fepi on potential funds. They're just doing it on much more volatile stocks. So premium could be, you know, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, whatever. This could be really, really good, but, you know, very volatile and risky. I was okay with that. I didn't check on it Friday. So when I was eating breakfast Saturday morning, I wanted to look to see what covered calls they opened. And I saw that they had closed all their covered calls, sold all their shares and went back into synthetic. So I'm like, wait a minute, you just opened up new calls. What, what was the point of switching? So me personally, I need more clarification on what's, what, what is a reason or a potential issue that might cause you to switch your strategies after such a short time frame. If that question can be answered to me and I'm, a, and I'm okay with that answer, then I might get back into Alti. But until something like that is clarified, I, I can't see myself owning yeah, Alti. So, so what, what uh, Colby is talking about, well, first of all, he's talking about two different funds. He's talking about Misty, M-S-T-Y, the beginning. And then he's talking about Alti, U-L-T-Y. So we're looking at ULTY here. ULTY have a lot of stocks. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I have to open the Excel spreadsheet if you're gonna download all the holding. And um, it's, it's opening right now. Uh, they own uh, BHVN. I don't even know what BHVN, that's something new. When did they get that? <laughs> what the heck? Oh, uh, Biohaven. Wow, that's, that's new. Anybody know when they got that? They own no, C but now you're now you're getting into really risky stuff with yeah. pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. I won't I won't even touch or look at pharmaceuticals. It's crazy. They are uh, they, they are risky. They own CLSK, which they own that for a while. Coin they own that for a while. Uh, CVNA that's Kavana they own that for a while. ENPH that's something new. So the the, the big uh, this that's is N the NG. All right, that's energy. Yep. Um, and then they own Egypt, e -Y -E -Y PT. Another pharmaceutical. Uh, all right, so what, what, the reason that why they own it, I'm gonna show you why they own all these things here in a few seconds. Uh, and then they own GCT, ITC. Wow, they just clean house and just swap everything out. Okay, right, they still have root. Uh, they still have MSTR, they have S uh, SM they have SMCI, so they still have a few, but they add a few a uh, whole bunch of new stuff. Uh, they sold our Broadcom, uh, was it AVNG? I believe was Broadcom. Um, wow, they swap out fast. Okay, so the big problem when you swap out too fast and you do cover call strategy, this is just the my theory. The, the, it, they don't have enough time to recover. You got to you, because you're paying, you're paying like two dollar, a dollar and forty something cents out of the nav. Okay, great. Well, your underlying stock better come back up pretty quickly. <laughs> and uh, oh man, they're gonna have to answer that question hard. I, I don't know how they're gonna do it because um, Alti. Alti in, in, in a very short time. Let's see how long Alti been around. I'll, I'll give you an example. Roughly one month. Not Yeah, a little bit more than a month. A little bit more than a month. The price dropped faster than Tesla did in a year. And Tesla, Tesla is very volatile. Tesla is, is probably D, you know, from a NAV, you know, from a, from a capital, uh, you know, from a capital... Uh, you know, from a starting uh, starting price to a lower price, Tesla and or Tesla is probably the worst one of, of all the yield max. They're down almost 60% or something like that. And Ulti in a very short time, 
it's like like Tesla Tesla couldn't even do this in a short time but Ulti did this in just one month because next month if they pay a, more than a dollar again a dollar let's say a dollar fifty again guess what this price is coming down to 13 12 dollars you know yeah so there's there's some there's some stuff that they have to figure out they have to discover they have to like play with this I don't know I don't know I don't have an answer but the uh, lion do you have an answer there is one point I'd like to make about all uh, yeah. because it's a basket of different type of uh, uh, vehicles or instruments each and every one of those, they have a very high IV. And from IV, they can generate very high premium income from option trading. <clears throat> so the fact that uh, sometimes they're changing strategy, they can change it because of market conditions. There could be different market conditions that we sometimes we don't see. They are very active at it. They're looking and they have a different platform that they're basically trading on a Bloomberg type of platform mm -hmm. that they see things that we don't see. And I remember that in one of the interviews, Jay mentioned that. So we have to take into consideration, we're talking about professionals here. Yeah. And the fact that people invest in them is also because of the fact that they have a a strategy to be able to yield the maximum pay attention to the name it's ultra high yield etf mm -hmm. and they're going to squeeze it from multiple companies mm -hmm. by doing this synthetics so the, the fact that they're paying 1.4 dollars they may continue paying the same it may have an impact to the net asset value as you mentioned and i agree with that because it's coming out of the nav. That's the fact. However, if you look at the other side of the coin, because of the fact that they have flexibility to change the underlying and be able to squeeze more IVs, that may compensate the investors or the shareholders by having very high income on a monthly basis. So if you are looking to generate income, you generate cash flow, of course, you may see uh, with drawdown. However, I don't see this as a problem to, at least my, again, not financial advice, my opinion. I don't see this as a, f a problem to generate income on a monthly basis when you have a flexibility to change the strategy and buy those companies that they have a high IV. That's the whole idea of they generating high premium from them. If they take something solid, very conservative, they cannot squeeze a lot of juice out of them. Well, no, I, I, I don't think we want them to do that. I think we'll, I think what me and Colby and a lot of us is looking at Ulti as why rotate them so fast? Yeah, so about the rotation so fast, it could be maybe rotating on certain conditions that we don't see. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. We may see something at a certain point, but they see they may see something a little bit different. So we don't have, I mean, we're looking at data. It may be lagging data. It may be something else. But I don't believe that professionals will make a very huge mistakes unless it's something that is a human error that can, like what, what happened with Misty when I talked the other day with Colby, and I agree with you 100%. You don't take the 1700 synthetic and add to that when you know that's not going to make it within three days. That's foolish to do. And they really actually do buy and they close it and they change and created a new synthetics as lower, lower, lower rate. And they're able to do that, to be able to recover and preserve some of the capital. But I'm not talking about Misty now, I'm talking about Altis. So if I go back to the Altis uh, argument, my call is that I see this as actually an opportunity. I'm a contrarian type of investor. So I'm looking at what is it that this can break. It could be maybe a case where you have a trader that's doing a foolish stuff, which we talked about, maybe going in and out. 
but it's going to be very damaging to Zika Financial, to Chase Team, to do that stuff when it's acting unprofessional. I think there is something that we don't know, that they have a platform like Bloomberg platform, which I know is the most innovative type of option trading platform in the world, that they have something that we sometimes don't see. And and the fact that they're sometimes doing things that looking strange for us retail investor investors, this looking very odd, but for them it may be looking very logic or rational to do it because they want to yield the maximum income out of these underlines. So that's that's what that's what I want to take. I want to caveat that it's it's not that the we have to look at the all component in order to make a decision. And we don't have these variables sometimes an unknown to us. Mm-hmm. That's the reason I'm in it. I think that I'm trusting their uh, uh, experience. I'm trusting their knowledge uh, and their decision making process when they decide to innovate in this com- to innovate and they dis- and decide to invest in these type of companies. That's the way I look at it. Uh, so you, you but, so you don't okay. see you don't see it as a uh, uh, dude at the current rate of them paying a dollar fifty uh, <laughs> every every month. This thing gonna hit below ten dollar in you know by July. Yeah. So question. let me ask you a question. Let so let me ask you a question. Yeah. We talked about Tesla doing reverse split and we still continue investing because generate income for us a cash flow. Yeah. If Ulti generates for you a cash flow and let's say six months from now or three months from now, they're going to do reverse split. Are you go- going to abandon this fund? No, not at all. Not at all. Here you go. Yeah. That's the answer. Yeah, so yeah. I'm taking... Well, I, I know that, but, but, but yeah. uh, see, this, this is, I, I'm, I'm asking you a question because you and I think yeah. the same because you're essentially going to say exactly what this is the mindsets different between a growth investor and an income investor the mindset is so opposite it's not even funny i look at this i look at ulti as money generating like cash cow i was like oh my god this thing is beautiful this thing is this is like tessie twin sister you know to show up and uh, and she she has a, a you know I don't know red head or something red hair, you know something. This is crazy uh, because all I see is I'm gonna buy this thing at nine dollar or ten dollars and it's gonna pay me a dollar fifty. Matter of fact, it's gonna keep dropping lower and it's gonna pay me a dollar fifty. And it's just gonna. We, be like, well, we don't we don't necessarily know that. I mean, it could if they stick to the hundred percent. If it drops down to eleven, it could be a dollar ten. Yeah, but it's still going to be a lot. <laughs> it's yeah. still going to be a lot of money. Yeah, I yeah. mean, let's find a fund that can pay like that. That's the whole idea of ultra high yield dividend. That's to call it ulti. I, I don't know if they're going to pay a reason for that. but it's going to pay more than more than eighty cents uh, because they're, they're going after IV that's over a hundred. Exactly. Yeah, so it's it's going to be at least hovering a dollar. I have or something. a question. Yeah. Is do you think uh, <clears throat> what's caused it to go down so much is that? A recent downturn is just being more magnified with the types of stocks they're in. No, the, uh, absolutely. I think, I, I think this one is down because they they rotate in and out too fast. I mean, it's it, it just between last week and this week they already rotated. I, I just I just show I didn't even recognize some of the funds. Come here. Yeah. It's, it's pay the piper. How you doing, boss? Uh, I'm doing great, man. Good. Good to hear you. Good to hear your voice. Good to yeah. see everybody. So, so Alti, and I see Claude on here, and he's definitely a lot more knowledgeable about these types of options, but why I like the Alti, mm-hmm. and Kamir, you've been talking about it in terms of rotating funds out. Mm-hmm. I think that Alti could be a superior uh, fund for Yieldmax because they're able to rotate out the stocks that may not be either are going down or are maybe not good um, so that they can capture more upside. So for instance, <clears throat> if you had Tesla in it, mm-hmm. 
you know, let's pretend Ulti existed and then you had Tesla in it and it's going down and the IV goes down. Ulti has the ability to basically take Tesla out yep. of that fund and put in a new fund based upon market conditions, whatever it may be, that's shooting up, like let's say Coney, which was shooting up, right, for everybody mm -hmm. the past couple months. And so I think it, it may be superior, and, and, and I'm looking for, I'm still waiting to see it, and we haven't seen it. Because now we've, we've been kind of down now, right? In the down mm -hmm. market. But I'm waiting to see, and Claude, if you're listening or not, if you're putting in six, seven, eight different funds and those funds take off, what pre prevents Ulti from also taking off to do like an, a, an NVDY or a, or a Kony, you know, or a Misty? you know, in terms of taking off the share price for that fund. Um, so to have that ability to exchange things out, I think is, is important for the fund um, to, to, you know, when you, when you got something bad in there, you could take it out. Uh, but I'll ultimately still, still waiting to see if they can do it. And I'd like to hear if anybody else, based on what I just said in that concept, does anybody agree with, with that or, do they disagree and certainly you know why do you agree or disagree so yeah so thanks for uh, the opportunity guys uh, i that's exactly my point that i made earlier uh, by the way uh, and the fact that they have the flexibility to take out those that they are lower yielding quote unquote out and be able to put in more much much more higher yielding ones into the portfolio that gives them the ability to squeeze more IVs and be able to get uh, or secure more premium income out of it. That, that's exactly the point. And, and the fact that we are using their experience to decide based on the underlying market condition, that gives them the power to decide which one they can generate more income for us. And they can decide which companies they can write this cover call against. And I, I see this as beautiful because that gives them the option to look very carefully at any day, any time, what works and what doesn't work. That's the point. It, it's still so they want to try to capture. Uh, Piper, Piper is way too early. It's only a month old and it paid two right, dividends, right, I believe. Right. And, and I, it's, it's what you're asking, what you're saying, totally agree, violent agreement, but I just, I, I think we just need more time. Oh, Claude, go ahead, Claude. Uh, no, it's, uh, to what Piper was saying earlier, as far as, uh, rotating somebody in there that's, that's hitting home runs. That's yeah, that's ideal. Uh, what Lion was saying, it's ideal. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work, though. That that's that's a lot of work. That's that's the old fashioned. I think we've all read, you know, posts and books, uh, financial phrases that always said, you know, don't chase the yield. But that's what that's that's what this is kind of reminding me of is chasing the yield. If you you know, rotating this out for that, you know, sitting this on the bench for a little while, you know, it's, it's nothing more than a uh, how a mutual fund manager runs runs their shop, but uh, like I said, time will tell. Yeah. So so Claude. Um, yeah. Jay in his last in one of his last interviews, he indicated that they are going to try to capture more of the volatility of some of the let's say Magnificent Seven or other stocks that are more popular during their earnings. And so they were gonna switch those in and out during earnings. We know earnings, things are volatile, right? Yeah. So does that does that change your perspective on that? And I understand we don't wanna capture yield, but you know, we know like, right, Coney went up so high because of coin and Coney went up because 
the volatility was so high that they could they could place that price higher and still get that yield and then you're getting that appreciation so if they try to capture create that concept with certain funds even if they put in amazon or google or netflix right where there's high volatility do you think they can create a product that they can switch these stocks in in and out either based on earnings right you can put stocks in that have earnings super high volatility for that month or other other stocks that obviously have other vi- uh, high volatility for other reasons do you think that's sustainable that can create and make ulti from what it, what, what is it now 15 16 to you know what coin coiny did or or misty do you, do you think that's a possibility if they if it depends on how they do it in my opinion um uh, like you said, volatility of the underlines is going to be high around earnings time. So if they're rotated in before earnings, then you know you can get juicy premiums for the shareholders. If they're going to play it through earnings, that's a whole nother beast right there. You know, it's playing it through earnings. You don't really know what you're going to get at that point, because if you if you select a strike and for some reason it blows through it, now, now you got to give up some money. So it depends on how they play it. I can see them rotating something because, you know, there is a there is a sweet spot where IV for an underlying will uptick as it approaches the earnings. So if they do it that way, yeah, you can probably see some juicy, some juicy premiums, you know, out of the money, juicy premiums as opposed to any other day. But like I said, again, only time we, we for those that's into this one, they're just gonna have to watch it and see how they do it. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I'm going, Piper. Uh, I was gonna answer some questions. Yeah. No. 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 Just, just we'll, we'll cap it off here. Thanks, Claude. No. Great. Great insight. I mean, at least for me, that's that's sort of my perspective yeah. on it. And like Tamir, you said, uh, you know, it's super young, and. You know, this one, this fund for Jay was created way after all the others. Mm-hmm. And so I have to believe he understands and he knows based upon all these interviews with all these people, you know, the IV, the, you know, this, that, and the other, it, well, that first he one, wants to time. try to get an opportunity. It, it's, right. It's not and like he, wants he has to, something he wants to, to keep yeah. that IV up, yeah, you yeah. know, or not the IV, but the NAV. Like, yeah. he wants the ability in the prospectus to change things out if he needs to try to make sure that the nav stays up they don't i don't, I don't think do he cares about the nav spirit. i think he need to keep the nav so we can pay us higher premium but i don't think he remember he always said when he talked about tesla he said he's going after the yield yeah he's not talking he's, nav, ero- nav erosion does not exist in yield max definition if you if you if you mention nav erosion to jay he's going to look at you with a funny eye He's going. Does he say that? Does he say that with Alti though? I, I I really feel like this is his like. Alti is his, his baby, no, where it, he it, can. The nav will be it. fine. I, I don't. I don't see. I don't see a nav issue with Alti as much as Tesla. I, I I'm violent. Yeah, agree sure with you. I I'll, I'll, I'll defend. I'll defend your thesis for you, because of the rotation. If if there's a stock that's coming down right now, all of them coming down. But but if there's a stock like out of the fifteen stocks one of them is struggling really bad and of course it's bringing everything down so yeah they have to they have the benefit of dropping it you can't drop tesla because tesla is tesla you know what i mean you can't you can't drop tesla from tesla it, 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 the, that's what the etf is but this one they can let's say coinbase is struggling really bad and it's gonna be fine yeah it's gonna be fine I so the option basically once... to be able to change the uh, company, right? The yeah. uh, to do the option uh, option trading on that basically give them the opportunity to take those that they underperforming and put something that could be outperforming based on IVs. That way they can secure higher income. Now, if they lost 
from the underperforming, they can be compensated by putting a higher IV and generate and generate higher income out of it. Yeah. That will compensate, that will give them more winning chances than losing chances. You see yeah. what I'm trying to say? That probability of getting more winnings than losing uh, in that trades, that's what they try to get uh, and maintain the NAV. But, but yield max is yield max. He said that always, that the yield is the most important thing for, the, for this brand. That's the reason they called it yield max, right? Yeah. So, so that's, that's what we need to distinguish between this fund and the other. And I agree with you, Camara, about the fact that when you have a single, single stock ETF, whether it's coin or Misty or Tesla, they cannot drop that one. I mean, it's based on the underlying one single ETF. They have the risk of one company. But when you have a bunch of companies, whether this is an index type based of ETF, or if this is like what they do, that they have a flexible to change and put in, put get out some of those companies from that holdings, that gives them an edge. That's my opinion. Yeah, let me, let, let, uh, you guys want to add some more, but I was going to explain how I play Ulti because Ulti is a huge, uh, my it's in my portfolio. It's a big factor in my portfolio. All right, so let's start with this basic concept here, minimal, because minimal want to know how you get rich really fast. All right, if you want to get rich really fast, I'm trying to do it within three years and you're watching me doing it. You watch me going through from year one, year two and year three. Uh, I do what you call phase approach uh, to to my investment. Year one, I just went after all. I just went after one fund. That was Tesla. I put all my money in Tesla. 98% of my money went into Tesla. The other 2%, it went to everything else. And um, and that 98%, I'm, I'm essentially maximizing return. So what happened, it looked like this. Uh, I'll start with year one and I'll, I'll explain you the whole time. So in year one, my portfolio looked like this. I started off in January with like seven cents of dividends. But by the time I hit June and July, I have 500%, uh, 500 cents of $500 of dividends. And then I had 1,400 dividends. Then I had 1,800 dividends in September. Then I had 2,000 dividends in October. Then I had 2,700 uh, in November. Then I had 3,000 dividends. And during the time, I put about 1,500 a month in there, and plus I throw extra money here and there. But the reason why I went up like that, it's not because I throw more money in there. I went up because it went up like that because Tesla went down. And so this is where this is where I got the idea from, uh, because when Tesla came down, what happened is I got more share. I got more share. I got more income. It really come down to that. It's really that simple. It's not rocket sciences. A lot of people make investment and they think it's rocket sciences. You want to be rich, you got to own a lot of share. I, I mean, for dividends. If you want to be rich, you got to own a lot of shares to generate dividends, the income, a lot of share. So. If the price is really, really high, you, you can only buy so many share. But if the price is really low, you're going to get a lot of share. The, the, the wild card is that nobody, everybody always talk about, yeah, what about this capital thing, erosion? What about the price? Yeah, 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 this thing came down. Well, Tesla, yeah, Tesla came down. I'm not disregarding. I'm not disregarding. It came down like 60%. 60% of its value. But, hey, may I add something? Yes. Uh, you also had a clip as well. Yeah, yeah, but 98% of my money is still in Tesla. Th that means I only own a very little chunk of clips and ORK. I own other stuff too. I own ARR, I own Sacham Corp, I own Coca-Cola, but 98% of my money was in, sitting in Tesla. So yeah, it's down, but as it come down like this, I got more share. I just, I got a lot of share. And what happened with that share, and, and here's the thing, here's the kicker, here's the wild kicker. Even though it's down, it still managed to pay 50% yield. And that's really the secret sauce. It's still paying good yield. So here I am, just getting more share, keep getting more share. And then now it's paying you a lot of yields. 
a lot of a lot of a lot of money. I mean, essentially, at the end of the year, I'm getting fourteen dollars for every share. Just think about that. That's crazy. That's a lot of money. That's all. That's like a hundred percent. Well, guess what? Guess what happened? Uh, guess what happened in year in the second year, 2024, which is January, which is only like four months ago. In January, I got four thousand six hundred. Well, and guess what else I do? I turn off my contribution. I don't need to donate anymore. I, I'm, I'm having over three thousand dollar. In my second year, I made five thousand dollar. My my third year, I made uh, I mean third not third year third month in March, I made six thousand dollar. And this month, April. I made seven thousand, and next month I'm gonna make seven thousand three hundred ninety. So think about this: every every three months I'm gonna make about thousand dollars. It's actually not every three months; it's like two months. But every three months I make about a thousand dollars. So I make seven thousand three hundred ninety-five right now. Well, by June, I'm gonna make eight thousand dollars. July, August, September, I'm gonna make nine thousand dollars. October, November, December, I'm gonna make ten thousand dollars. That's how you get rich. You're not going to get rich if you're going to go buy a four hundred dollar stocks. You're not, not. Yeah, in twenty years, and thirty years. You, if you want to get rich fast, you got to go. Buy, you got to, you got to accumulate as many share as possible at the lowest price. And the lowest price right now. Let me go back to the lowest price right now is these guys right here. I mean, OLK, AIYY, and Tesla at thirteen dollar, eleven dollar, eleven dollar. Clip at 14, ULTY at 14. That's why ponderance of my money is right sitting with all these low stocks here. I have a question. Yeah. So, I don't know, it might be, sound dumb, but uh, so with regards to the low price, why, why does it matter whether I, because say there's a, there's a, I just put in like whatever, 10K into a stock and they're saying that it's going to produce this much dividend. And say, um, as, versus like what does it matter if you know if, that you're getting that that percentage off that money versus like how many shares like even if it goes down i don't think the dividend would stay the same so it's not like your yield is going up it would probably like with tesla still be 50 percent. so it never it, does it really matter like whether the 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 amount of shares you actually have or am I just looking at it differently? I'm just. I, I don't understand your question because you're saying the number of shares doesn't matter. Well, you're saying as the price goes down, you could get more shares. Yeah, as the price right? comes down, you okay? There's two different concepts. You say you start off with ten thousand dollar. That's a total different concept. I'm starting with zero, so I'm working my way in. So I I buy I put a thousand I put money in every month at a cycle. So I put in a. A thousand five hundred every month into this fund. Mm. That thousand five hundred can only buy me so many things. But if I buy OLK at eleven dollar, I can get a lot. But if I if I take a thousand five hundred and buy VU, guess how many share right, I get? But, I, make, I get three. But isn't the yield that you would get off of that total amount be pretty much the same regardless of how many shares? Or... Yeah, you, but you buying at you buying eleven dollar and thirty two cents. You buying at this point right here. See, you're looking at it. Mm. You're looking at it from the time from the time uh, of inception. Uh -huh. Let me go back. Okay, uh, let's. I'm sorry. What, what I was looking at. Oh, okay. I, mean, uh, I could see that being a a good thing if, if the price. Uh, goes up right because then you're buying cheaper shares yeah. which in the future you're looking will be at it from far. a time of inception i'm sorry this is tesla let's yeah. let's look at tesla because i since we're talking about you're looking at from the time inception but you're buying right here right but wasn't the yield this about the same when at the time of inception versus now like around 50 or 60 percent yeah you you okay i mean i guess i guess if you want to think it that way i mean but i don't think it that way i don't look at that way like if you started off with ten thousand at inception, you would still be getting fifty percent or whatever that no, yield. No, if, if you start right with, now, if I, you I'm not disagreeing. If, if you start with ten thousand, you're gonna only have four thousand dollar left because you lost sixty six thousand dollar. Right, but if you just care about yield and cash flow, you're still gonna be getting that same, no? No, it's not or, because the dividends does not make up the the total amount 
exactly. It's, not, it's going down because the yield is right going now. down too. Then, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's going to take time. Yeah, in, in year two, you're going to get all your money back. It takes you about two years to get all your money back. Or, or about a year, a little bit more than a year. Mm. You see it also on? depends on the compounding effect. If yeah. you decide to reinvest, you can get your money faster. Because that, uh, that way you can gain more shares when it's cheaper. You Have get you put, a lot of shares, and then the dividend that yeah. uh, you get paid next time is going to be higher. So that's the re the ROI. Instead of two years, it's going to be maybe eighteen months or sixteen months. Yeah, it's it's so all it, de it's all depending yeah. on. Uh, yeah. it, let's yeah. say you take all you ten thousand dollar, and it's right now sitting at thirteen, it's you lost six thousand dollar. You have to make six thousand dollar within. Uh, what 14 months 15 months yeah you you already got your money back and you know what I mean I, I you, you're talking to a guy who doesn't care about the nav erosion I don't I don't even I don't even want to waste time calculating this thing because I already made my money like I know that if I put the money in here it, it you don't have to do math it's just think about it. just just think logically you put the money in there and this thing is paying you 50 percent yield every month you're gonna get your money back in a so if you put the money in there in one year, you're gonna get 50% back. You're gonna get $5,000 back. Hmm. You see what I'm talking about? Right, so in the case where I said where you put in Inception 10K. Yeah, 10K in one year later, you're gonna get $5,000 uh, 50, 50, uh, $5, back. Yeah, you lost you lost 6,000, but you're gonna get 5,000 worth of dividends. But however, the second year is still paying fifty percent. But you don't need to get the second year. You get it, and you get it in about uh, six months. Uh, you know, a year and six months, roughly, if my math is correct in my head. You see, what I'm talking about. Sort of. I guess I'm trying to relate it to the amount of shares, because you're saying like you can get more shares, more shares. But that's yes, that's, yes. That's a good. That's a good thing if it's going to go up in price, right? If you're planning for it to go up in price, because well, then you're the, getting if, more shares for if, a cheaper price. If, if Tesla was at twenty dollars the whole time, all right, twenty dollars the whole time, the most I can get, the most I can get, you can just pull. Let's let's do the math. One thousand five hundred divide by. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I have to use their new number, which is forty 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 dollars. So I I only get thirty seven share. That's all I get. Thirty seven share every month. Thirty seven share. Thirty seven share. 37 share times 12, I get 450 share. That's it. By the end of the year, I own 450 share plus compounding. But, you know, it's just a rough a rough estimate, okay? So it's not, not a lot. It's not a lot of share you get. But imagine you take 1,500 and, and divide by $13, for example. Let's say $14, whatever. I'm getting 115 share. There's a huge difference between 115 and 30. We're talking about almost four times four time the amount. You, you're getting four times of the value of the money you put in. You see what I'm talking about? So, and so if you take 104, uh, you take 115 times 12, I'm owning, I own 1,384 share versus the other number. And of course, oh. any amount they pay is going to be a lot because I own 1,284 shares. It, it's really come down to is the number of share. If you only own 10 share, you only get that amount. If you own 1,000 share, you get that amount. If you own 5,000 share, you can get that amount. You want to get as many shares as you can. That That's really come Does down. Does it depend also because over time the... the, the um... The actual dividend price has has what has that been doing has it been going up staying even or going down the the price per share of, of your what you're getting per per share like for the dividend if we track it like for My, the dividends it's it's been 50 percent the whole time so it's 50 percent of 20 50 percent of 15 50 percent of ten dollars 50 percent of thirty dollars okay. Tesla has not paid has not paid less than fifteen percent, not once. Right. It it always been paid fifty percent. So, 
So it's been going down with the price. Yes. Basically, right? Yes. Right, because it's a percentage, right? If I have a percentage of yeah. and that twenty is my whole you know, if you spend ten thousand dollars on a twenty dollar stock and then you don't do anything else, a year later, if it's gone down sixty percent, you're making less on your dividend payment because the main price of the ETF is sixty percent less. But you're still making 50% of whatever the current price is at the time of the dividend payment. That's the key. So yeah, Jay has said, if you do nothing else, you will lose your money. You will lose money over time. If you buy right. it once and do nothing else, you're going to lose your money over time. So there's a maintenance component that's needed, just like any other equity investment requires a maintenance you need to either reinvest back into the same fund or as Kamer is doing he's reinvesting into other funds but initially he was all in on tesla that's how he made his money and he's showing that he's proving how he exploded even when as tesla was going down when tesla was at its lowest point that's when he that's when he really went all in yeah yeah that's what i did today i bought 1500 more shares i'm at 5000 shares now yeah yeah so I, you're not going to get probably, richer uh, you're not going to get richer by buying something expensive you're going to get richer buying something lower especially when they're paying dividends yeah and, it sounds like if you're going to stick with the same uh fund you should plan on at least a portion of it reinvesting to lower your your average, i would say right? reinvest all of it until you need the money yeah, and, and, and yeah. Well, here's the thing: you don't have to re. Well, it's up to you. I, I, my first year, I was very disciplined. Oh, trust me, I got beat up all the time because I was all in on Tesla, and I made videos said I'm all in on Tesla. That's all I buy was Tesla. Like, like oh, paycheck Tesla, paycheck Pesce. I, I just it was just Tesla, um, and I you know whatever money left over, some odd number, I buy something else. But it's mostly Tesla. And um, yeah, people tease me all the time. I get harassed, but I have a phase plan. My plan was like, in the first year, I'm gonna try to get $3,000 of Tesla. Once I reach $3,000, I remember retiring Div and say, congratulations, man, you work hard to get that $3,000. Once I get $3,000, guess what happened? I, sw I switch. I took the dividends from Tesla and I started buying all the other one. I bought Clip, I bought QQY, I bought everything else to grow that funds. Uh, to grow that week because at my second week I get three thousand dollar, and um, and so that's how I've been playing it, and it's uh, you know it's just I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it. I mean it's just it's just you you can you can just buy Tesla only Tesla for the next five years, which is fine, um, but that's not what I want to do. So to get to get fifty percent yield. You can get 50% yield from some other fund too. So you don't have to get it from Tesla. Let me show you how many funds that pay you more than 50% yield. I, I get Forget it. ULTY. The main thing I got is that you, you have to reinvest basically to stay as close to the the, the, the price level. Yeah, you. Or you, if you know if you're in the green, then obviously you, you don't have to buy back into it. But yeah. if you're in the red, it, it serves you best to 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 reinvest to try to get lower your average yeah year one, year one i put all into tesla year two i buy clip all into clip and clip was cheap too and i like great and clip paid me pretty good yield and then i buy qqy and qqy is pretty cheap too and they, they got good yield and now i'm in ulty and ulty is 14 dollars, very cheap and yet uh ulty paid me more than a lot of yield yeah i guess that's important to uh <laughs> i guess because I've, I've been learning all about these, but to hear that at least explicitly said that, yeah, if 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 you're going, if the stock is in a, is going downwards, you have to, well, you have to make up, you have to pre pretty much reinvest uh, or else your dividends are going to end up going down, right? No. Don't expect the same dividends. Um, it, the dividend is not based on you reinvesting. It, the dividend is based on the premium you get, the, how, how they... If they have a successful premium, they, they have a really good month, they're going to give you $2. Yeah. 
but if the stock is going downwards, like it sounds like you have to reinvest to or else. I no. mean, yeah, the test, the Tesla one is like a, a good example, right? You don't like, have to reinvest. Get... That's, the, that's you... the beauty of this. In January, take a look at January for Tesla. All it did was go down and they were they won 100 percent, 100 percent. Every call they made every week, they made money on it. Why? Because selling a call is a bearish play. The reason why it lost on the nav was because the underlying that they chose, the, the strike yeah. on the underlying, obviously went down because Tesla went down. But it, that's why it almost doesn't really matter because they're, they're not really paying, they're not technically paying from the underlying that they, the, the strike on the underlying yeah. that they make. Although they can, when it goes up like Misty, I think they did. They had to because they didn't make it. They didn't make four dollars and twenty some odd cents on just their calls, but they made a killing on the underlying. They, I mean, they made a hundred million dollars almost. So yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but they they were a hundred percent in January. It was a beautiful thing to watch as it was going down, and I wasn't. And this is when I started to get in. I wasn't worried at all. I was like, I'm getting paid. They're making money. I'm getting paid. Right. So if we look at that month, uh, the it should be um, higher, I guess, or something that that dividend, because they got a hundred percent of it, right? Or yeah, no, it was it was fifty percent at the at the time of the of the of the pay, uh, of the, pay, the dividend payment, whatever the nav was. was yeah. yeah. Okay. But, so it's not it's not a, they're not paying you out a hundred percent of whatever they make. They're paying you fifty percent of basically the nav is how the calculation. Well, no, actually, it's. It's the IV that they're trying to match. They're trying to match the IV. Mm -hmm. they're trying to extrinsic, the extrinsic value, basically, of the premium income. That's what they pay. Mm -hmm. So the IV is basically, generally, that's kind of the yield that they try to squeeze. More or less about 2-3%. That's what they're trying to achieve, according to my calculation. Yes, and that, that, and that's uh, why I like what you guys are saying about Ulti. I mean, it, the whole market's going down, so pretty much everything's going down. But I can't, I cannot wait to see what happens to Ulti in an uh, in an up market, in a, in a bear market, or uh, excuse yeah. me, in a bull market. You know, so but Smendo, in the down do, market, do you average? Do you average into Tesla, or do you make your money up some other way? Yeah, like I said yesterday, I sold everything. I sold out of Coney. I sold out of IWMY. I sold yeah. uh, another fund, and I kept Clip and Tesla. And I bought fifteen hundred shares today when it when it went to thirteen seventy eight. I bought fifteen hundred shares then, and now I'm waiting. Uh, you know, I didn't I didn't spend a third of what I made on the Coney sale because the Coney sale made me about sixty percent after all said and done. IWMY was basically even, and the other one I was basically even. Okay. Uh, sorry to cut you offline. You were going to say something? Well, I just, no problem. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, you have to know what uh, the plan is. I mean, you have to decide what works for you. There's different way to play it, different way to skin the cat, as we said earlier. So either you can decide that you go in and reinvest, or you can decide to maintain the position let's say about 50 percent of the dividend paid you put it back in the fan in the fund and the remaining 50 percent you can decide to diversify and buy other funds uh, that generate high yield for you that way you have diversification you spread your risk with other underlines and other investments and that way if something pays less you can be compensated by getting paid higher from the other funds that's different strategy this is basically what i do i try to put back into the fund uh, to maintain it every fund almost every fund i put something in and then if i want to buy something new i open a position yeah. and then i grow it over time but it's it's a slow process but what you can see the compounding effect that's the beauty of this phenomenon so one, one thing minimal we talk about this before the show start is that you have you asking a lot of question and there's a lot of overlapping concept and theory mm -hmm. and we're trying to explain you it's now it's all over the place 
uh, and and you can get lost pretty quickly right now. It, it get to a point where this, I mean, how you ask the question, it become a different concept. You ask another question within that question, it become another different concept. So what you should do, yeah, like I said, is is get your 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 wife and kids in the room, whiteboard your plan, and said, here's my timeline. Here is how I'm gonna get rich, and. This Khmer guy, he has a three-year plan, and this is his three-year plans. His three-year plan, his year one, he went all into this one fund, all right? And that fund could just be X. Don't put a name to it, just put X, okay? Just random name, just X right now. Year two, he's diversifying right now. And year three, right. he's gonna reach, and then he's gonna take a look at uh, setting up for to pay, which is another whole separate conversation. I'm not even gonna go to year three. All right, so let's go back to year one. It's an it's an X fund. It could be any fund, any high yield. And then you you said, okay, there are many ways to get rich. There's many ways to get money. The basic concept is this: I gotta own a lot of share at a very low price because we don't have a lot of money. We're not rich. So what we're gonna do is, with the amount of money I have, I gotta go buy the one with the most share. And what I'm looking at right now is yield max. At this point, you can literally pick anyone. There's so many of them. They're all under twenty dollar. If you pick anything under twenty dollar, you're gonna win. You, you're, gonna, you're gonna win. So you, you literally, you can pick anyone. But I mean, IWMY is really good. ULTY is good. Uh, YMAX is good, YMAX is good. All of them are good, they're all good. So pick one and go with it. What you, You're at the point right now, you just need to pick one and test it. And you and a month down the road, you may realize that, man, this fund is really not that good. You know what, I'm gonna go to get another fund because it gave me more return. Because right now, you don't own it. When you don't own it, you don't have any passion toward it. You're just watching some guy on YouTube. But if you own the product, if you actually own the product, you're going to read it, yeah. Robert. You're going to study it. You're going to look at it. You want to know more. You're going to ask questions. You, you're going to ask people different questions but about this particular fund. Let's say, for example, you own uh, IWMY. IWMY is not even yield max. It's defiance, right? But they do... You know, and, and they do daily, uh, they do total different strategy. But IWMY is $16 and pay you $1, all right? And it's a very good fund because they pay you $1 and it's very cheap, so you can get a lot of share. And you're like, this is how I'm gonna get rich. I'm gonna own a lot of share of IWMY. I'm gonna put my money in there. I'm gonna go all in and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get something in return at the end. You, you're gonna have to plan it out. You're gonna have to map it out like I did. Like every single decision I made here, I have a PowerPoint for it. You, you see the PowerPoint on Sunday. I built PowerPoint for it that explains step by step. So this way when I'm confused, when I'm about to do something crazy, I go back to my PowerPoint, I look at it and go like, okay, whoo, breathe, breathe. Focus on Tesla, wait until Tesla reach 3000 and then make another decision. Focus on Tesla and then making it. I only had one fund and I did that. Now I'm diversify because I want to go after weekly. So I'm going after week. When I diversify, I'm going after four weeks. My first week is QQY, IWMY. My second week is Tesla, Coney, and the rest of the yield max. And my third week is ULTY and Y Max and Y Max. And my fourth week is Clip. There's my diversification getting those four weeks. Now I put my money. I take the money I get from three thousand dollars from Tesla. I put into Clip. I put into QQY. I put in. Now I'm growing my ULTY, and and that's how I do it because I I plan it out and I phase it. If you're not able, if you cannot explain your concept to to your children, I don't know if you have children or not, but if you cannot exp, like I explain my concept to my mom, to my dad, and my mom is born in the jungle, Cambodia, right? So if she can't understand it, then I probably don't need to do it. Because this thing is not rocket science, it's not hard. If I, if I can't explain to her my, my concept, how I'm gonna get rich in three years, then I'm probably in the wrong, I'm, I'm in the wrong uh, track. I'm, I'm doing something wrong because she can't, she doesn't understand. You should be able to explain. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I was trying to get that approach. Um, so that's my sort of without written down was to have, you know, some funds for week one, two, and three, and four, and then just as I get it for one, I 
I in, invested into the next weeks and just and it would just cycle and that's pretty much it. That was going to be my plan for now. So yeah, yeah, um, and and start with start with that. Uh, Smeno, you want to say something? Uh, no, I was just uh, accidentally hit my keyboard. Sorry. Oh yeah, no problem. All right, so minimum. Um, I one on Thursday. The most popular thing go on Thursday is portfolio review. I gotta change subject here because uh, the guys want to hear their portfolio review. <laughs> That's fine. Thanks for all your help. Yeah. Well, dude, you're in the community. Just keep asking questions. You can't go wrong with asking a lot of questions. You make make sense. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, and so, trust me, we will if. Somebody will ask this question in about a few a few weeks because we have new people. The channel is focused on new people. I'm trying to get a, a piece of paper here so I can take notes. Well, also, I, I, yeah. I, I like because some of these questions probably had answered for some people that are newbies, too, that they just maybe didn't want to ask. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Hopefully yeah. it helped out some people. Yeah, totally. Violent grieving. There's, there's somebody here did not they have the exact same question you have and they they just they just don't want to ask you know, or they can't ask or they don't, you know and or sometimes you ask a question they didn't even think about asking but it came up now and they're like oh my i didn't know about that you know uh smendo's going to be a really rich man <laughs> according to uh you own 5000 share now 4000 share or 5000 share 5000 unbelievable congratulations man Okay, so if for those out there have not sent me a, the, your portfolio and you want us to review it, um, uh, send it to me. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna I'm, instead of going in order, I'm gonna go based on who is in Discord so we can talk about it. Uh, let me just go do a quick roll call. So call Steve-O. Steve, are you here? Are you in? Are you in Discord? I, if you're in YouTube or, or Twitch. Or Facebook or Instagram, whatever you you seeing this, uh, just come to Discord and let's talk about it. Um, Steve, are you there? I know there's some lag. All right, so this is Steve's account, and um, I would love to talk about. We we actually talk about Steve's account with SCSU. Was it SCSU or Colby, who, who I was talking to? And um, about this account, and we're like, I can't wait to, can't wait to review Stevo. All right, so Stevo, we're giving you a few minutes to come online, and uh, if you can come online, it's great. If not, we we'll can do this another day, and uh, and 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 review again. All right. Dos, are you online? Dos, D O S. All right. Williams, are you are you still driving trucks? Okay. I'm actually parked. Oh, you actually parked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't run over any kids, man. No, 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 never, never, never. Uh, uh, I. That well, if you're running over kids, in, if you're running over kids on high on the highway, it's probably an alien. Not a legal <laughs> alien. I'm talking about alien from Mars or from another planet. Yeah, uh, that, that's the one thing I never want to do. <laughs> all right, um, all right. I'm glad you're here. But since I have since I have Stevo on, let's talk about Stevo real quick. Kobe, uh, Kobe, was it you and I? We talk about Stevo uh, account. You, you and I did, yeah. Okay. All right. Since 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 I since since he's he's not here, we're gonna do a little quick review, and I uh, and I want to let him aware of it. All right. Let me timestamp this. So 59 minutes. All right, Steve O. Uh, this is your portfolio, and uh, he looked like he's making an annual income of 254. First of all, what application is this? I've never seen this before. I've seen a lot of application. Is this? Does anybody know what where this come from? Is this come from thing? Uh, did this come from uh, what account? What what? what? Any, anybody know? Yeah, I'm not familiar with this company. Is this is this uh, uh, in, interactive brokers or is this blue, uh, 
uh, bowl, something bowl, wee bowl. Anyway, doesn't matter. But so anyway, I'm not familiar with this account and it show his annual income of $254,000 a year. That's that's twice. So essentially making $20,000 a month. This is the exact amount of money that I'm, I'm going after. So uh, this is a huge portfolio. A lot of us, uh, but those who don't know this, uh, eventually I'm gonna end up changing my name to High Yield Dividends Millionaire Warriors. I mean, it's just crazy how many how many people are making ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars a month, uh, and and just doing high yield dividend investing? It it works because we have living proof. We have people with testimony, and they're doing really, really well. I'm really happy for them, and I'm doing really well. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, people would love to have my portfolio. I know they love they make love making fun of me, but I'm making seven thousand dollars a month without any contribution and I'm on my way to making $10,000 a month at the end of the year. How many people would, would love to have that kind of portfolio? They, they do, but they, they you know, so, so I, I, under, I totally understand it. So his portfolio is consists of Connie, NVD, ULTY, uh, Roundhill, YBTC, that's a Bitcoin one, and Crane Share Clips. All right, so his biggest fund is Connie. Oh yeah, if you own any amount of Connie that's more than more than $500, you are doing really well. You're going to make a lot of money. In his case, he owned 3,570 times $2.79. That's how he get 9,900 a month. I mean, that alone is getting you $9,000 a month just owning 3,570 Connie. And that's awesome. The one thing I wish I, I I wish he was online is how much did he pay for it? You know how much did he pay for this this fund and then um, the next one he owned is NVD he owned 900 share at two dollars sixty one and that's how we get two thousand dollars a month that's pretty good a month and then his biggest one is ULTY he owned five thousand four hundred share and that gave him uh, seven thousand Okay, the way he playing this, uh, I don't know Steve O that well. I never met Steve O. I, I never talked to Steve O. Based on his play, is 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 Claude in here? Claude, I think this guy is an option trader. This this looked just like Kenny Fold. Uh, this looked like this looked like yours or Kenny and Huff. You know, like because because when he know exactly like like. An, am an amateur like me would not throw 5,400 share into ULTY unless you know exactly what option trading is. I would throw I would throw 5,400 share into NVD, but I'm not going to throw 5,400 share into ULTY because ULTY is only a, only a, a month and a half, and in a month and a half he put 5,400 shares in here. That's what option traders do because the reason why they do that is they generate the income. The reason they want to generate the income is for the margin so they can reinvest. One, they get the margin and they get the income to do cover call, uh, cash secure put. Is that right, Cloud? I mean, this looks like an option trader portfolio. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sitting there looking at the... Uh... Dollar forty two, four dollars and thirteen cents. Yeah, that that may be the case. Those may actually be option prices or some things. Yeah, like this is not an amateur guy. This is the, 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 I, I look at his portfolio. Steve, I never met Steve. Oh, if, if Steve was online, I can tell you right now, Steve -O is not an amateur. It's not it's not somebody like me who just started out last year. This guy been doing option trading for a while because he's going after the income, he's getting $20,000, he's using that $20,000 to secure put or to do other option trading. Because a, a, a guy with a lot of money, like, like, like Patma and I, you know, when, when, when you know, Patma had some money, so, so when she moved, she's selling her SCHD, she's selling, she's moving money around to get income. She's not gonna go move that amount right away. She moved, she would move into like NVD, into Microsoft, to Apple, things that we are familiar with, you know? But when you're going into ULTY, 
you know exactly what GL Max is doing. You know what option trading is. You understand what synthetic cover call is, and you understand how they generate income. And he you, he's understand the IV very well. So he's like that thing is gonna make gonna give him a lot of money, and that's why he went after it. Uh, so this is a this is a very varsity move. Um, the reason why I say this because when I when I when I was talking to Kenny, uh, when I look at his folder, and this is what got me thinking because Kenny and I, uh, I was very heavily on Tesla. He was heavy on Connie, but we have the same amount of in our in our account. And I was like, how is this guy have the same amount, but he generate more income for me, uh, more than me, because he knew. He knew what the IV will do to the premium, so he bought a lot of, a lot of Connie, and that's how he can generate a lot more income, and and of course he take that income to do more option trading, uh, and he and he take that income to buy more Tesla to give him more margin. It's cr it's crazy how they play. They they it's it's like, they're very good at moving money around. You know, very very active. We're talking about they do this thing daily or weekly. So it's not even, is, is that right, Claude? You guys doing like weekly when you move money around. Huh? Claude, are you still there? All right. Yeah, so this is, yeah, so hey, Steve-O, awesome job. I'm very proud of you. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is my goal to get the $20,000. But this is a very advanced portfolio, extremely advanced. Most of us don't start it this way. Most of us have to build our, our build our portfolio. So, uh, uh, Manila is it Manila or minimal? Minimal. This is a portfolio that he did not build. He just he essentially bought into it. Make sense? Like yes, he, sir. Yeah, he he put he went in and put five thousand four hundred six share. Let me tell you how much it costs. Uh, let's say he paid twenty dollar for it. Five hundred four six share times twenty. I'm sorry. Five thousand four oh six times twenty. He just, he put a hundred and eight dollars. This 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 fund is only a month old. So he, either he paid yesterday. At very cheap, or he paid somewhere around between twenty dollars and fourteen dollars, you know, eighteen dollars. So it's not it's not an old fund; it's only a month old. So he must have paid one hundred eight thousand dollars. He just moved one hundred eight thousand dollars to get ULTY, and I can tell you, option trader does not look at the NAV the same way that a, 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 a investor do. Option trader look at look at the income and take that income to do something else with it. They're not looking at the nav as much, so he's got with that. With when he moved that money in, he got seven thousand six hundred sixty, and he's going to take that seven thousand, or he's going to take twenty thousand to combine money twenty thousand, and he's going to and he's going to option trade, you know, buy secure put, uh, you know, assets. Uh, it, it this is this is amazing. There's a guy called Strongman Personal Finance who said he's making bad video about command. That's fine. I don't know him. I don't know who he is. I don't care. You know, it just it just it just tell you beat beat a stock. Uh, it just to show you how unprofessional some people are. I like we don't know each other. I don't know him. Why would he make a video about me? I don't. I'm not gonna make a video about him. So I don't know him. So that is that that's just a, a childish and amateur, immature uh, behavior. And you know, and maybe his fan, his 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 people. We'll call him out on it. Yeah, it doesn't bother me, man. All right, all right. So, uh, any anyone have any uh, questions on this particular one? All right. Yeah, I wish Steve was here so we can talk to him. Uh, let's go to the next one. We're gonna go to Bill. Bill, are you there? Yes, sir. I uh, I know you're excited. You're ready for it. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy at the moment. <laughs> Ooh. I'm still here? Yeah. Oh, okay. 
So you have $137,000 in your portfolio and uh, you make an annual income of $75,000. Yield on cost is 83. That's pretty good, man. And uh, let's see what you own. All right, it's opening right now. All right, so you own AIYY with two share. You own coin with 0 0.07 share. That's weird. How do you own 0 0.07? Dude, why don't you just it's buy called, one share? It's called a fractional share. Of that I like bought $5 worth of that stock uh, ticker in order to monitor it. Robinhood right. lets you buy fractional shares. Yeah. Connie, uh, he own, you own 611 share. Feppy, F-E-P-I, you own 22 share. I-W-M-Y, another fractional share, 0 0.03. I-W-M-Y, uh, you own 720 share. Jep, Jep Y, you own 234. Clip, you own 953. Clip is your biggest one. And then you got LAC. I'm not familiar with LAC. Uh, that's, the, that's the lithium mine up in uh, northern Nevada. Okay. And you own MDST. This is the one we were just talking about. Do you own? Do you own it when we were talking about it? No, I just bought it just so I can see it, what the price is going to do with it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, MSTY uh, own three hundred forty-four share. Nvidia is point zero one. And VD, as you own 461 share, and QQQI own 544, and Spy T own 12, Tesla 0 0.03, Tesla 198. You own more clip than Tesla? Wow, that's pretty. Well, uh, well pretty, you want to hear the story on that one? Yeah, yeah. Those shares in uh, Clip is actually what I had in Tesla, and I set a hard uh, floor like a month before and it hit it and i said okay you got if you i went and checked out to, uh the clip price and it was like a dot the tesla share hit the 1560 mark and at that time the clip share was at 1470 thereabouts and i did the math and i said okay mm -hmm. let's go mm -hmm. ahead and move it and i got a second dividend within two weeks with basically with the same shares and then I was going to move it back to Tesla but it's just no I don't really like doing that so I I kept the clip and I'm adding on to it I uh, need another 300 shares thereabouts probably less now to get to the thousand uh, dollar dividend mark per month on that one and then I'm rebuilding Tesla I don't know if I make any sense there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my cost basis for Tesla now is like uh, fourteen fifty at the moment, and I, I'm just gonna keep DCing it down. And uh, and you were asking about the LAC. Well, that's a, a Tesla move as well. Uh, mm -hmm. People don't, I don't know how many people know that Tesla is building the uh, a factory, uh, uh, factory or is 80 or 75% complete there at the same location that this mine is at. And they're, so they are getting mineral or lithium from that mine that they're building out there. Is this the and picture you, can, this is the picture you want us to see? Oh, that's windmills. Oh. <laughs> That's what I haul. <laughs> oh, you haul that windmill? Oh, for those who don't know this, Bill is a truck driver. And, yeah. and they, we, you may not realize this, but there's a lot of truck driver that listen to my show. The reason is because I do long formats. All my show is almost long formats. Um, and, um, you know, some of my videos like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And, and all my live stream is, is two hours or more. So a lot of the truck driver, they would just put on my YouTube video and just watch it. And the reason I know this is because they would send me, let me know and say, hey, you know, get them through from, 
from Houston to Dallas or to the Colorado, whatever. Whatever make them happy, man. I'm, I'm here to support the truck drivers out there. But uh, yeah, so Bill, I mean, uh, first of all, truck driver, let me, let me start with uh, income, just kind of an idea. Do you make a lot of money as a truck driver? I mean, are you, are you? It's yes and no. Right. <laughs> this year I have it. Last year I did. Uh, uh, last year gross uh, income was around 349000 Yeah. And net was one hundred and ten. Uh, there's a lot of expenses in uh, in being a truck driver, and, and I paid about twenty five thousand dollars in federal income tax off mm. of that hundred twenty five thousand. So you pretty and, much make more money monthly in your dividends than your t income, because you make well. You're last making 7, year I was a month. Last year, I was averaging between eighteen thousand to twenty-two thousand dollars a month. Okay. This year, this year, I'm only averaging about forty-five hundred dollars a month on my income. Couple of reasons: I had two major breakdowns in the last uh, six months. Had to replace the engine in my truck. Yeah. Uh, that was under warranty, but I lost a month of work. I had plenty of credit and uh, and money put back to you know, survive that. And then in February, I lost another five days because something they messed up when on the engine rebuild had to be repaired. And it yeah. basically had to get towed to that and wait in line to get that fixed. But so, then the other reason is overall the comedy is not uh, in transportation, in a tra uh, truck and transportation. Yeah. We got people going out of business right now. So... Yeah. But that's the whole reason for this is that, you know, that $7,500 right there, that's maybe two weeks pay or $7,500 of that uh, monthly income that I was able to get so far. That's about two to three, uh, two weeks of pay, uh, you know, replacement. So, and I haven't taken anything out of it yet. I keep rolling everything back in and I... My plan is only touch it when I absolutely need it, and then, oh, and my wife told me last night they wanted to go see a Stevie Nicks concert, so I'm going to have to make her happy, too. <laughs> but Yeah, you're doing great, man. Uh, yeah, you're doing great, man. It's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. You know, just think about, you're a truck driver. I, I don't know how much you make, but, uh, you know, like, on the average, but... We, we got all people from all kind of working class and from all walk of life. And, and I mean, you've been in our community for a while. What do you think of our investment strategy style? I mean, do you... What I, love, what I love about this community is we sit, uh, I can sit and listen to everybody uh, come up with different strategies and they come across different stock and then I'll go... You know, and I'll look at that idea and go look at it and says, hmm, that sounds like uh, a good thing. Let's try it. And right now, it's just now I'm building on Cliff to get it to that $1,000 limit, uh, a monthly, not limit, but $1,000 dividend per month. And and uh, go back and start. Uh, I need to get the cost average down on Jeppy and QQY down and. And also IWMY, get it that back yeah. down a little bit and get more shares and build that, uh, build the defiance sector up. It kind of, it took a little, they're, they've been neglected a little bit, so it's time to give them some uh, attention. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm glad you're here because uh, your opinion matters. Everybody's opinions matter. We enjoy you. Uh, uh, we enjoy your company a lot. Um, I learned a lot about truck. I actually learned more about trucking from Bill than than, than anything else. I, I, I have no idea. I have no idea how trucking work. I don't know. I have no idea how tax work, uh, how they make money and stuff like that. He went in some detail. Uh, we didn't just talk about money, but we talked about some other stuff. So I, I'm very proud of you, uh, Bill. Uh, my, my only thing, though, I don't know if you need to waste time buying .3 uh, 0 0.01 uh, 
uh, and Nvidia. I mean, I mean, you point zero one share of Nvidia. Come on, man. Just buy it. Well, <laughs> I looked at selling it today so I can buy something else, but it was I would end up selling it at a loss. So I'm gonna wait for it to go back up in share uh, price. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it, it's interesting. You uh, Nvidia, Tesla, and stuff like that. It's good. You know, uh, you have a very good diversified portfolio. You're definitely all in um, in this thing. I think I, I like Clips a lot. I like Tesla. I like ULTY. Uh, matter of fact, we we didn't talk enough about MDST, but the future is MDST. Man, it's gonna be. There's some money to be made here. Uh, what, Let's think about this. Uh, Tesla, uh, all the yield max, none of the underlining, maybe one or two, but none of the underlining pay dividends. Uh, they don't pay dividends. But MDST, the underlining pay dividends. They pay a lot of dividends. That's energy sector. So how they play it, man, how they do cover call on our energy, there's potential to be a lot of money in MDST. So uh, I, I can't wait for that. I can't, it's still early. It's only like a week old, so can't wait to see what it looked like down the road um, yeah I would continue you continue on throwing ULTY Y max and Y max your third week is strong man so you you got paid really good on the on your on your fourth week you get your third week is your strongest right now and second week is pretty good uh, the only thing is your first week you know you're not you're not so strong in the first week because you have yeah that's the that's the defiance. I got to get them built back up. Yeah. Otherwise, you get pretty much you get a pretty balanced fund. You get paid weekly every every week. You get some good money coming in. Yep, I'm expecting uh, the uh, third week. Uh, probably the funds will probably come available on Tuesday. That's when Robin to let you spend it. And uh, yep. Probably got if I can't. It's too if it's too late to get clip. It's IWMY getting the love. <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, what what is real exciting is the snowball effect and how quick it has really just rolled it up, uh, gotten up to this level. I just like. Oh wow, what's another three months going to be like from now? Yeah, all right, uh, this is awesome, man. All right, good job, man. Well, have a good night. Are you are you going to sleep now or you can keep on driving? Oh, I cannot go any further tonight because I got two oversized bulldozers on the back of my trailer. All right. So I can't drive at night. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all the other one, is, I don't know if the guys came in yet. Uh, if they came back, let me let me click on the uh, portfolio really quick. Uh, T and Bob, are you there by any chance? T and Bob. T and Bob wanted us to show his portfolio, but he's not in Discord. All right, so he's not here. And DOS is not here. All right. That's awesome. All right. One of the things um, I want to share this uh, perspective, you know, I start the titles, uh, go back to the basic. Um, you know, that's the title of tonight's show is let's go back to the basic and uh, go back to investment basic or basic investment, whatever you want to call it. It's going back to the basic. When we kind of understand for many years, uh, when I say we, I shouldn't include me yet because I, I was in the military the whole time while you guys making money, right? Uh, I didn't go to school for this stuff. I, I never work in corporate America. Uh, I don't have any experience in any type of investment. Um, and but I knew there was something wrong with the world. So I was like, I'm gonna fix it. So I start, I opened a child swap account two, two, uh, a year ago in January, and I start my investment journey. And as I, as I go to the investment journey, 
the one of the things that one of one of truism in investment basic of investment is this this concept called buy low sell high uh, so you want to buy something low and sell something high it makes sense buy something low and as it grow sell it when on a high point and then take that money and buy some more low stuff and sell a high point and it totally makes sense it's very simple and we talk about all the time buy low and sell high but what happened is you you see a lot of youtuber talk about that like every youtube every youtuber talk about buying low selling high buying on the dips buying what is down buying you know buying when the fund is dropping below you know it's cost average or whatever you know dca down they always talk about buying everything on the low like everything is low but what but when it comes to tesla and tesla for some reason that concept does not exist like all those people out there they, they talk about buying on buying low sell high buying on the dips and everything else but but as soon as i show them hey look at tesla this happened to like yesterday video like i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm going to sell some precision so I can buy Tesla because Tesla is on its low point right now. This is this is all time low, uh, 52 weeks low right now. And it's about to hit. It's about to hit. It's five years, you know, low here at 113 or something like that. This is low. This is low right now. Why? This is this is we should be talking about buying Tesla. But for whatever reason, people talk about Tesla is as kind of like you're gonna lose, you end up holding the bag, it's gonna fail. What? What why why Tesla doesn't deserve that same concept, buy low, sell high? What what is it with Tesla? Of course, same thing with Tesla. Tesla is an all-time low right now. Tesla is an all-time low. Why nobody talking about buying it? Because that concept of Russell Marine, this is an all-time low, why not buy it? Forget about, you know, dividend or whatever, you know, forget, just just the, the basic concept of buying low and selling high. But for whatever reason, Tesla and Tesla doesn't, doesn't get the same treatment. They don't, they buy low and sell. You see YouTuber talk about this. I was listening to YouTuber. And, and they talk about, you know, when they talk about VU, for example, they're like, oh man, VU, buy low. You know, like you, you want to wait until it's dipped down a little bit. You know, when you see these dip right here, yeah, just put, put some, oh, that's not VU. You know, when, when you see these, you see when there's a dip right there, here's a dip. And then, yeah, go ahead and buy that dip or buy this dip. Oh, buy this dip right here. Look at that, 377, buy this dip right here. And, but Tesla is all time low. And for whatever reason, that's not even in a conversation. For some reason that that's become bad. And so that's, that's, that's my monologue today. And I was going to start with that, but we jump right in and start talking about some stuff. And my monologue was, uh, was going to ask that question. Like why, why we're not doing the same thing? We, we all should be talking about buying something right now. We should all be talking about buying Tesla right now. What a great opportunity. What a great opportunity to own. This, com this company is not 20 years old. It's not 30 years old. If you're a growth investor, if you're a growth investor, how do you reject this? How do you reject Tesla and yet you go and, and, and boost spy and and qqq vu and some other company this thing is all it's it's at it's 52 weeks low i should see a lot of youtube video about buying this thing but you know what they do they will come into my comments and they say they would tell me that tesla's gonna fail tesla's gonna fail um i'm wasting my money 
nav erosion, capital erosion, 43. What what are you talking about? It's at the low time. That's that's when you buy it. Don't so when do you buy it? Let me ask you, when do you buy it? Do you only buy stocks that's going up? Do you only buy so that for, you're only buying MSTY? You only buy when they're going up? If you care about nav erosion so much and you're willing to die on that hill, then then the question I'm asking is, when do you buy it? So you if you if you that's the case, then you only buying things that are going up. Well, good luck. You can't have it both way. Income fund's not gonna work that way. Income fund doesn't work that way. You're not gonna generate income or yield if you worry about nav erosion. It just doesn't work that way. What 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 you fail to ask is just how to play this fund and maximize it. How to get the best return and make the most money. Take the money, put it in your pocket, and run. What happened is, this people are so busy hating. They're, they're so busy hating on our strategy. They're so busy hating on our portfolio that they forgot to ask the simplest thing. Man, you guys are getting rich. How are you getting rich? Maybe I should get rich too. But they're so worried and they're so worried about proving a point that look at this, nav erosion, capital erosion. Look, you lost 60% of the value. You lost 60% of the value. I already gained that value. That loss? And I'm... I'm what, what happened is they keep forgetting there's a dividend on the other side. They, they, they always forget about that. The, 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 the nav erosion people always talk about that, but they forgot that there's a dividend on the other side. And it, they get to a point that was so illogical, they're so illogical that I tell them, I make 7,000 a month making on my way to make $10,000 a month. Are you telling me you don't want $10,000 a month? Is that what it is? You don't want ten thousand dollars a month? That's crazy. With your without your contribution, ten thousand dollars a month. I don't have to put any money in it anymore, and it's still growing. It's on its way to twenty thousand dollars a month. Hey, Sheriff, you want to say something? Yeah. Hey, hi, hi, everybody. Doing the day. Um, I've been listening, um, but. To get to what you're saying, as as we always say, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink. And what you what you're saying is 100. You know what I'm saying? This is this this is the system. And I look back on myself over the years of my investing, and this was this was just something sent from heaven because now people can realize the money right away and not wait 30 years i'm sold i'm not turning back and and i'm well over thirty thousand a month can't nobody else tell me nothing i'm sold yeah you're making thirty thousand a month you think you're gonna yeah 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 it's crazy so so right now what i what i'm doing is because i'm i'm um i'm trying to get them to be on the record I want them to die hard, admit to I no income fund. I want them to keep beating that drum. All those YouTubers out there, beat that drum. Keep beating the drum. Tesla is a scam. Yield Max is a scam. Keep beating it. Keep hating on it. Keep keep telling us that we're gonna fail. Keep keep hey keep doing it, man. And uh, and keep telling us that you know we're, we're all gonna fail and the money the sometimes. Because what's going to happen in a couple of years, the reality is going to kick in. In a couple of years, there's going to be so many, there's going to be so many income funds, and there's so many people making money really, really fast, and all those YouTubers who's anti, 
anti-dividends income, anti-high yield dividends income. We're the only one left standing. Uh, I, I was talking to retired dividend. I'm, I, I, I think we're literally the only one left standing. Nobody, people just bail, they just quit. And you know what I find out, Chef? A lot of them trying, a lot of them coming back. I, I see them in Discord. I haven't seen them in months, and all of a sudden they came back to Discord. I'm like, oh, I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, I haven't seen you in a while. Why? Why don't you go hang out with the other community? Why don't you go hang out with some other Discord? Why don't you go hang <laughs> out with somebody else? Because what happened is my portfolio is not slowing down. It's just keep getting bigger and bigger. And and everybody in our community is getting bigger and bigger. It multiplied not by it's not it's not in like one x or two x. It's literally like quadruple, because the power compounding at at that volume at that at that price point is so high. Yeah, it's money to be made. But one thing that you know, I, I guess all of us got a taste of the other day. Uh, you got to remember, <laughs> you got to protect yourself for the, these taxes because it ain't no joke. Oh yeah, I I still have a job, so my tax come from my W two. But once I stop working, I will put the money in. Yeah, I think what what, what my strategy is gonna be. I'm gonna um, each month I'm gonna pull maybe seven to eight thousand and set it aside. I found out that you know if you are expected to pay more than a thousand dollars in taxes, you're supposed to be paying quarterly taxes, and if you don't, you're gonna be penalized. So um, I got my tax bill. It was like ninety-two thousand dollars. So um, just pre prepare for it, and don't just spend all the money because you know the IRS is sitting there waiting. Yeah. But I'm gonna stay on the gas. To, you know, hey, the, the the more you have to pay the IRS, mean that you know you had a pretty good year. Yep. I I I. Oh my God. I I can't wait to see my tax next year. It's gonna be unbelievable. Uh yeah, what ahead. did you say about that? If it's if it's over, if what's over a certain amount? If you are expected to you let's because see, I have an LLC. If you um, have an LLC and you are expected to pay more than a thousand dollars, you should be paying quarterly taxes. So when I got my taxes done, um, what the beginning of the month. Uh, my tax preparer, they gave me these little slips telling me, you know, um, every month, well, every quarter what I have to pay, um, you know, to, 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 to pre prevent, hopefully prevent from having to pay a penalty. But I know they looking at what your current income is and what you expect to make. But with, with what we are currently doing every month that you reinvest more money you're gonna make more money than what's projected because if you look at charles swab charles swab give you uh, a projection out 12 months if you don't put any more money into it but if you constantly invest in what they project it's increasing every month so you know it's it's for me because you know I'm I'm getting quite a bit of money each month. It's starting to get out of hand, man. <laughs> but, you know, and is that only because you're an LLC, or what about for the rest of us that are just filing say, as individuals? Say that I, again. I have so to pay quarterly. Okay. Yeah, yeah apply if you're in for individual also. You need to make yep. sure to pay at least 90% of the annual gross income to pay the taxes. 90% you have IRS is waiting for you. If you don't have enough in W-4 to pay your taxes, you either increase the amount that you have to pay through the W-4 or you have to pay the quarterly estimates through vouchers yep. that you're going to get for double tax. That's what I do. This yeah. year, I sent the first payment by April 15 for 2024 in order to avoid the penalty, to be penalized. In order to avoid the penalty, you have to, to, to pay them in advance, quarterly. Yeah. Also individuals, not just MLC. That's yeah, the law. Uh, 
I'm a uh, uh, independent, a sole proprietor uh, on 1099, and uh, have to uh, pay quarterly on the, my uh, estimated or my revenue every quarter. Yeah, it, it's just it's 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 tricky. You know, I you know we make we all making this money, but you you got to think about long term because what I wind up doing. He had my, my, my accountant, he kind of whispered a little bit in my ear, hey, boy, you made quite a bit of money this year. Um, your taxes are going to be high. So he just gave me some numbers. But then once he actually done the calculations and, and I was like, wow, man, I'm having to pay $20,240 a quarter. So it's not a big deal because of the, the dividends that I'm getting. I could just save $7,000 a month. In, in in a quarter that's twenty one thousand dollars and you know with american express you can get uh, that high yield savings account with them and you can still you know I, I take that money put it in that american express account and i'm still making what four percent on the money as it grows then when it's time to pay that estimate i just pull the money out of there boom it don't even it, it don't even really matter because you know you creating a system and once you get that machine to working you just keep it going you know one thing one thing i want to try i don't know if anybody does this um i'm not going to do it until i until i until i reach my goal of twenty thousand dollars a month i want to i want to use my credit card my united airline credit card to so i get my mileage my flight mileage and then I use that to pay off everything, my mortgage, everything. I use essentially my credit card to pay everything, and then I use my my dividends to pay my credit card off. Every month. Yeah, I, 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 that uh, that uh, Charles Schwab, Charles Schwab have American Express credit card that you know you earn those points and on with what Charles Schwab. <laughs> And, and uh, uh, Morgan Stanley, I think they have one too, where you can you can earn those points. And, and with Charles Schwab, you can you can convert them points back into Charles Schwab for cash. Cause I've done it last year, and I got it was almost eight thousand dollars in conversion from those points. And you know, I was using the credit card to pay for things that I'm gonna pay for anyway. I hardly ever carry cash. I use credit card. And I don't have any carry over every month. If I charge $8,000 on that card, when it's due, I'm paying $8,000 so I don't pay no interest. But it's a smart thing to do, you know. I I want something back every time. If I spend my money, I want something in return. Yeah, I use my 0% uh, percent credit card to... Uh operate and pay bill uh every you know buy uh, do all the purchases and then at the end of the month i get my use uh uh business account pay off all of my uh business uh invoices or bills and then and another account to pay for the household and then as the month goes along a revenue co a paycheck or a revenue come in from the load sale haul it all gets uh, deposited back into the account and rinse and repeat. That way, I protect uh, against uh, fraud uh, from people trying to scam uh, your uh, bank account. Yep. Yep. I, I I really like this system now. You know, it it done got to that point where. I don't have to put my money in it. It feeds itself. That's yeah. what's that that's a very important tool right there. Yeah. That's the most important tool. Is it's feed itself. And uh Yeah, so it's uh you know you brought some good points here. And you know, for those who don't know this, Chef uh Chef is not a He's not like a super millionaire or something. He grew up in the military just like I did. It's just that he's a little older than I am. But, you know, he's a military guy. For all, for all those veterans out there, all those military guys out there, you can make $30,000 too, man. Just work hard, get out of the military, max out your, you know, your pension, 
and then uh, double dip it and then uh, invest like Jeff is doing, invest, making good money. Yeah, it's you know it's 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 it's, it's something else when you put yourself in a situation where you don't have to work for anybody anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That that this is such a great feeling, man. I'm I'm on I'm laying on my couch right now, just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> is your wife teasing you again? That you listen to us? Man, yeah, well she be she be snickering at me, but once she start uh, getting her. Her Tesla dividends and QQQY, and she seen that it, it got real. Then when she seen the money that that's <laughs> for nothing, yeah, she 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 um she happy. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm so proud of you, man. So proud of you. Good job. Yeah. Yep. You made, just think about it, you made more money than most general. There's a lot of generals out there, a lot of colonels out there. They don't know how to invest. And then even though they're smart and they got a good career, and when they got out of the military, they don't they don't have that power, that prestige, and they don't have people, you know, at their begging call anymore. And they walk around kind of aimlessly working at a cubicle somewhere. And just, you know, man, it's crazy. I bump into a lot of colonels like that. Yeah, you know, you got to, it, I know my time, my 20 years in the military, you know, they didn't have very much financial literacy, uh, 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 anybody teaching you how to invest and all that. They had, uh, what, what it was, uh, um, dang, I forgot the name of the, the company. They they used to try to sell you insurance. You you in the military are, reti are about to retire. You don't need no insurance. You got it, you know? <laughs> and, insurance. Well, I use USAA. No, no, no. It was it was another one that was similar to oh, USAA. First Command? Is it First Command? Yeah, they had that. They had you, <laughs> you, you. I can't knock First Command. My good buddy worked there. I, I can't knock them. I can't knock them. My first buddy, my buddy, he he's a hustler. He 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 worked at First Command. No, it was NCOA, like what you just said. That that they used to tell you that that uh, trap thing. And I tell you something else. I had came into some money uh, back in 2017, and I went to SunTrust. And you know, uh, as soon as I came in there, uh, you know, I signed on with them, and 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 I was talking to the investment guy. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna invest. Uh, say what, hundred, hundred, hundred fifty thousand with them. Then I'm gonna take another hundred thousand and I'm gonna do my own investment with USAA after about six months of that I made more money with my limited knowledge and I lost money with these professionals I went back man give me my money back oh you got to wait a little while to make <laughs> no I yeah did no make money but Sun Trust and I <laughs> And now that we got, you know, we all been attached to this thing here, man. Yeah. This machine right here is nonstop. Anybody who don't do this, they just don't know what they missing out on. Yeah, that's what happened. And what happened is they look at my portfolio. What happened is every time they look at my YouTube video and all they see is this red and oh look, you're down $47,000, 25%. And, and they're like, you're, you're losing money and you're failing. That's all they see. And uh, and what happened? There's so there's so you know hatred of this plan. Um, even though you try to explain to them just simple logic like this, this forty-seven thousand dollar is the market price, and the market is down right now for Tesla because I, I'm I'm heavily on Tesla, but they they don't see that they they won't care they don't want to listen about that they just like okay. You know, if I sell, if I sold out on my Tesla, and I sold on my Tesla, this thing is gone. Yeah. And and at the same token, it's unrealized. You ain't lost nothing until you sell. Yeah. Yeah, that's the key part. I I, I haven't lost anything yet. You now they always think of like, oh, you're losing, you're down percent. But well, I'm not selling anything because I'm an income investor. I'm making money, income. So. 
and and they totally forgot that you know I'm gonna make I'm gonna make seven I made seven thousand right now on my way to ten thousand, and it just keep going up. It is not it's not coming back down. It's not coming back down because I put seven thousand back into the system, and I'm continue to buy more funds, and eventually I'm gonna own a hundred share all across the board. Every single income fund I'm gonna own a hundred share. You know, and man, then, you. What, I'm sorry. What happened? You are killing it with with uh, with all those. I wish I had all of those, but I'm, I'm right now. I just want to beef up the ones that I have, and then I'm gonna start growing more. Oh yeah, it's uh, you know, I'm. Just, it's just keep growing. It just keep growing and growing. It, it's just gonna get bigger. It, it's not. I'm telling. Like I said, it doesn't come back. Uh, so. I'm gonna keep making six, seven, eight thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand dollars a month, and then at some point, what happened? I try to get these people to commit, you know, on the record that how much they hate heel max and how much they hate the dividend. And so what happened is, in a couple of years, we're all making money. By that time, they're gonna realize that you know what? Maybe those guys are right. I mean, just think about it. just Tesla alone. You you have to be you have to be like sleeping on a rock somewhere thinking Tesla's gonna be filed for bankruptcy. They're not. Tesla is just going some tough time right now, but eventually it's gonna come back, come back up. Yeah. And and then what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do when when my portfolio come back up? What are you gonna say then after that? But by that time, I'm gonna make like ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a a month, and care less, man. Because at the end of the day, it's my portfolio. I'm the one who live in it, you know. That's it. Yeah. It's it's crazy how people are are adamant about certain things, but they 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 fail to listen to logic, man. Um, so my strategy is to get. You know, I'm trying to grow IWMY. It's 500 share right now. I'm going to try to get to a thousand share. With these two at a thousand share. It's I'm I'm heading toward a two thousand dollar a month first week, right? And my second week I'm getting you know two thousand three thousand from Tesla, plus Coney gonna give me you know five hundred to a thousand dollars, and then plus all the other funds you know like AMDY and and some other fund they pay you know second week. So and anyway Tes uh, second week I get paid three thousand four thousand dollar. And then my third week, which I'm trying to grow ULTY, I'm trying to get ULTY to a thousand. After I get to a thousand, then I'm going to grow Y Mag uh, and Y Max to like 500 share, 500 shares each. So that's giving me at least over a, a, almost two thousand dollar right there, you know, on third week. And clips uh, is, is my fourth week. Uh, I don't have a. a, a you know, my fourth week is clip and essentially FEPI, A-F-E-F-E-P-I. -E I'm growing it. I'm continuing to grow and it can continue throwing at it. So what happened, you're going to see, it's going to be 100 share right down below here. So there's like 50 something funds. I got 100 shares. I'm, every time there's a new income fund, I'll buy it. Like MDST is the newest one right here and I bought it. All right. So I'm going to get 100 share. After I reach 100 share across the board, now I'm going to go after 200 share. After I go 200, cross, uh, 200 share across the board, then I'm going to go after 300 share. I'm just doing 100 share at a time. And then eventually I'm going to get 400 share, 500 share. Next thing you know, I'm getting 1,000 shares across my entire portfolio here. It's just a method, and it's also fun. It's like a little game for me. you know. Is there any way that I can add a little bit to this? Yeah, sure. Being the new guy? Yeah. Because oh, obviously... You know, I've talked on your on your stream a little bit before. You you know, I'm a I'm a vocal guy in the chat a little bit because I'm at, I ask questions a lot. This is something I'm trying to understand because I know people talk about this and that selling, not selling, all sort of stuff. But so, like perfect example, this is what this is the way that I see this. So I, I know that you sitting there talking about everybody talks about the forty seven thousand that you're down, i.e. twenty five percent. But this is the thing because you're you're dividend investing. Mm -hmm. So yes, your your overall of what you own is down forty seven percent. But the question is, how long has that been red? Well, in the same turn, 
how long have you been making seven thousand dollars a month so overall you probably actually made way more back than if you sold all your stocks and lost you probably made way more back in dividends so technically you're at a net gain in the in the end game am i right or am i wrong yeah i'm i'm uh i'm already a net gain so it doesn't matter yeah and, and that's the th but that's and that's the thing that that people to me aren't truly understanding because all they want to go by is just whatever whatever your stock value is worth they're never in they're never including what you get paid back for the dividends like i've made a comment earlier in in the channel where this is not say that you, you you get paid either 25 cents or 25 dollars uh you know a month from the stocks that you have well at some point and then you kind of go down but the thing about it is at some point your dividend that's getting paid to you is going to out uh out accumulate what you initially paid for all of that yeah so you're no matter what you're gonna net positive so let's sit there and say you put ten thousand dollars into something at some point your dividend is going to pay you back more than ten thousand dollars so whenever you sit there and you hit that point and if you decide to sell guess what whatever you sold it for is a hundred percent net profit yeah. even though if it might be at a loss when you first bought it yeah. dividends already paid you back what you put into it yeah yeah well said man well said you you hit it right just think about this <laughs> I'm on my way to get ten thousand dollars a month, and somewhere around September, November, December, uh, somewhere around in the, that during that time period, I'm going to reach one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. One hundred twenty thousand dollars, uh, ten thousand dollars a month. The next month, the first month I reach ten thousand dollars a month. The next month I reach, uh, you know, the next month that I I carry that ten thousand. I already surpassed every because it's one hundred twenty thousand dollar. I already surpassed every single thing in my account here. Because I haven't put my money in it anymore. I stopped putting my money in it. So every single money here, I, I, it, my money has not touched since December. Like my, there's no money going into this account. It's just. I got one thing to ask, uh, 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 Premier. Yeah. You a major in in Marine Corps? Mm -hmm. How many years did it take you to get make ten thousand dollars a month? Uh, more than uh, oh, sixteen years. <laughs> okay, sixteen years. You may, you're gonna be getting ten thousand dollars a month going forward, and it took you sixteen years to work that. That's sweat equity. That took you sixteen years to well, get. Well, no, that. sixteen years to get to major, but, but my pay scale back then was not ten thousand. So, yeah, 20 years because I'm at the max pay scale of my, my rank. So back then it was, you know, my, when I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. It took me 16 years to reach major, but yeah. it took me what, 20 what years I, to get 10,000 though. That's what I'm getting at. It took you 20 years to get the $10,000. Yeah. And, Plus and all look, the hikes, <laughs> all the yeah. wars, all the deployments, all the loneliness, all, that, all the broken hearts. All the tears, all the pain. My skin fell and, off on my boots like two, three times. All the bleeding. And look, you getting ten thousand dollars, and you only been doing this two years. No, not two that years. It's it's. I started in January last year, so so twelve months plus four months, so sixteen months. Look at that. I, I'm sold, man. I'm sold. I, I did 20 years in the army and I, 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 I didn't get up to $10,000. And now doing this, and I've been doing it since July of last year when I've seen, I seen you on, I was in Germany on vacation and I seen you and I start doing it. And I'm, I'm over, like I say, I'm over 30 grand a month now. Yeah. So all the sales who the, don't the believe the people, the people who started with me from the beginning to now, their portfolio is in ten thousand or more, twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand, sixty thousand a month. Not 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 a year, a month. Because we measure it in months because we the yield the dividends pay in months, and um, yeah. They, nope. they, People just don't understand, you know. Like I say, some people are gonna try it. Some people are gonna say have so much to say about it because they don't understand it. But 
I'm living proof and I'm not turning back for nobody. Yeah. I'm like you. It's only it's only one or two people that can make me change my mind. Yeah, you can you can do the math here. Uh, for those who want to do math on my portfolio, last year in 2023 I made $12,000, okay? So there's $12,000. All right? In 2024 Remember, you got to add 3000 to to this because the Tesla reverse stock and Charles Schwab reset Tesla. So there's $3,000 missing. But I made three, uh, this year, I made 4000 So just do the math. Just somebody take the calculator and put you up. 4694 I made 5138 I made 6000 360 and this month I'm gonna make seven thousand. All right. So just just this month alone, I mean without uh somebody have an open mic. Let's pull up the calculator here first. Let's add twelve thousand. Well let's you wanna be precise? I I okay, just twelve thousand sixty four. All right, plus four. All right, I'm sorry. Let me let me pull the calculator so you can see it. I hate this calculator. I hate this calculator so much. All right. So twelve thousand. But we just we just do it here. Oh, I should have just do an Excel spreadsheet. 64 plus, all right, 4694 plus 5198 5, 5, plus 63 plus 7,000. Oop. All right. That's $35,000 right now that I receive. $35,000 right now. Next month, which is coming in about two weeks, in about two weeks, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get ponder my month, or three weeks. You're gonna have to add another seven thousand here in three weeks. In three we in three weeks, you're gonna add another seven thousand. It's not even seven thousand. It's like seven thousand six hundred, or you know five hundred. Let's say, let's go ahead and add seven thousand five hundred. Let's just make that number. Forty-two thousand dollar in three weeks. In three weeks, I'm gonna make forty-two thousand dollar. This accumulate accumulate uh, total that I receive up to this point. That's that's more than the current. That's more. That's pretty much close to this gain and loss. But remember, this gain and loss is the value of Tesla. If Tesla come back up, if Tesla if Tesla come back up, guess what? This gain and loss is going to come on down. But either way, I make forty-two thousand. Whether this go up or down, it didn't matter. I make forty-two thousand. The following month, following month in June, you're gonna add another seven thousand. Uh, almost, uh, you're gonna add eight thousand because at that time eight, I made eight thousand. No, no longer making seven thousand. Remember, every three months I made a thousand dollar. So in in June, it's gonna be eight thousand dollar into it. So in June, I'm gonna get fifty thousand of of income already. In July, you add another eight thousand, so that's fifty-eight thousand. See that, but that, that's what I'm talking about, though. When when I was talking about earlier, if you're if you've made more in dividends than mm -hmm. your initial or even total buy, mm -hmm. if you made more already, you you are technically not in the red, yeah. and that's the thing that I think even even on this side, like I said to say. I've only been in this game for for 90 days. 
Mm -hmm. I'm very young into it, but I'm listening to a lot of the community and and, and I'm, I'm taking feedback from a lot of the community. But also I'm seeing a lot of people talking about, well, I don't want to sell it at a loss. I don't want to sell it at a loss. It's not a loss if you've already made back what your total investment for that particular stock is. To me, that's that's just general math. If you sit there and you, you bought stock for $10,000 and that's all you put into it is $10,000, at some point your dividends will pay you back that $10,000. Now, if you sell it, before your dividends pay ten thousand dollars yes you can consider it as a loss then but once you sit here and you make that ten thousand dollars back in your dividends you're no, you, doesn't matter if you sell it for a penny guess what you still made money you didn't lose nothing because you made your investment back already and i think that's where people get a lot of things confused that's just my personal opinion but like i said to say I'm, I'm a mathematics guy i'm a big spreadsheet kind of guy so I, I love numbers. So that's why I look into stuff all the time. Well, that, yeah, we don't even have to calculate people... it, Jackson. We don't even have to calculate it. I just do the math. If you're making eight, uh, uh, $8,000 a month, in 10 months, it's $80,000. And my my entire cost on Tesla in 10 months, uh, Tesla is $80,000. Tesla, this is my my cost. Yeah, so, so for some reason, you can... I already made so my money somebody, because it's thirty-six thousand dollars loss. Even for a penny, you still net. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, and I, that's what I'm saying. I think a lot of people, even though even though we're all in the dividend game, whether it's high yield, low yield, it doesn't matter. Even if we're all in the dividend game, I think people, for some unknown reason, don't account for what you're making back from the dividend as a piece of total. Uh, buyback you know oh what, i don't what, buyback's not the word what but do you think they're gonna say return back this is this is only the second year what do you think they're gonna say in third year or fourth year when i haven't one i haven't put my money in it two it's all dividends money now four years into the thing i'm making 20 or forty thousand dollars a month and it doesn't matter what red is i'm gonna be like what why does it matter i already made my money back in my first investment I put fifty thousand dollar in my account, and I made more than fifty thousand dollar by gazillion dollar now, you know. But that, and that's what that's the point. That's what I'm saying. And I apologize, you know, kind of keep jumping in on this. But sure. that's the point, though, is once you've made once you've made your investment back, you you can have as much red as you want to if if the stock goes down a little, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. But you are not in a negative anymore because you have your investment. Yeah. And now technically whatever you sell and however you decide to sell it, if you do decide to sell it, it's a net positive, period. Or unless unless somebody can tell me that I'm wrong. I mean that's no, not wrong. to me the, the simple math. Well, yeah, because you're smart. Other people just want to <laughs> fight it. They just My want... thing is why would you want to sell your machine? The, yeah, you, I'm you, not gonna you, sell you, it. Your, I'm gonna give print. I'm I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to my wife so she can buy more uh, bags. If it's printing money, man, don't sell. I ain't selling. I I, I sold some of the, the the common stocks that I had, and I I cashed them out, and I bought Misty and some other stuff. But uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not selling I'm not selling my print machine. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep turning out them dollars. All right. Well, like so, like well, okay, no, I hundred percent agree with you on this. This, this is my thing. I, I will tell you, like I said, I've only been in the game for ninety days, but I, I did my research for like six months before I jumped into, into any investing. I will admit to you, I was the original dividend growth kind of guy, you know. And I do know that they talked about you know the high yield this, the high yield that, but this is the thing for right now to make good money to try to get to the long term game where can you find a dividend growth stock that's going to be twenty dollars or twenty five dollars a stock but it's going to pay you at least 50 cents or even more so i mean at the time this is if you listen to the people correctly you have the chance to make the money that you need to have that long-term gain that's the way that i i see this that's the way that i'm looking into it and because you know, it's it's just 
I don't. I just can't find that anywhere else. I have a massive spreadsheet that 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 analyzes stocks. How many stocks do I gotta buy to make a hundred dollars a month? How many stocks do I gotta buy to make five hundred a month? How many stocks do I gotta buy to make a thousand dollars a month? And it lets me know. It gives me a total breakdown, and it works with Google Finance, so all the stuff automatically uh, does its update, so I I know where I gotta be, but. I compare that to these other ones that are people are like, you got to go buy this, you got to go buy this. But the thing about it is, is you have to put so much money into it. Where's that money going to come from? I'm 45. I don't have 30 years to retire. I need to do it sooner than 30 years. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Yep. Well said, man. Well said. Kamara, I see you peeking in on the futures about what's happening right now. Yeah, because somebody in chat mentioned about uh, about uh, essentially um, the Bitcoin is down and future is like, oh my God, it's like straight down arrow. Yeah, Israel just responded and attacked Iran. Really? It's in the news right now? Yeah. Asia markets are all down also. Tesla is down to 145 right now. I don't see any live new right now. This is live. This can't do be. Do not let them raise your rates. Try ABC News. I think they mentioned about it. Well, according live now from Fox. I don't have TV, so. Uh, if you pull up Twitter, you it's got uh, like under the "What's Happening" tab or whatever, you can see it. Like there's see, oil too there. shot up, oil too yeah. shot up like crazy. <laughs> wow, this is happening real time, right? Okay, where what 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 I'm looking for in Twitter? Um, it's usually on the right hand side. It's a column that says like "What's Happening." I'm a What's happening? Yeah, there there's a section that's um it's has like what's happening and it has like current events and stuff and like like all the trending stuff. <laughs> Maybe I need to sign up for even on CNN yet. I don't see it on CNN. I would thought I would have thought it would have been like the first thing. ABC is broadcasting on YouTube. Or ABC? Yep. Uh, apparently, apparently they they attacked uh, uh, a city in Iran, a city in Syria, and then Baghdad, Iraq. That targeted. Uh, um, so Israel uh, has been telegraphing for nuclear, days now. Nuclear sites. Respond, but there has been absolute oh. silence from the Israeli government. They have been meeting almost every day to discuss potential mm. responses, but not announcing Interesting. anything. Why am I the Israeli stream? military, they continue to say there will be a response at the time and place of our choosing. It came now, and this is close to the Passover holiday. Uh, we understand that uh, there Somebody might have been World an War effort III. to try to avert some sort of. Um, rise in tensions with which have already been pretty high before the holidays apparently that is not an issue uh and they went ahead with there's been strike. youtubers Anyhow, on uh clear how doing the world war three thing for the last couple of months augmenting with the with the, uh Navy, israel and iran Force, thing and they have been saying that their response will <coughs> and it'll be immediate unlike last time over the weekend which Let they waited about 10 days tab. to respond got, like, or two weeks um, now. unclear what the response is going to be we assume there will be some so tension is going to be very very high oh they're not responding yet. up it's uh still before five oh no they did and there's and explosions all just over today, iran. iran warned that it had the ability to strike israeli nuclear sites if israel threatened to do the same uh in iran uh, i know you said that that things have been quiet as so it appears they went there, after israeli some nuclear sites as well we're hearing from residents yep. there on the ground Were oh they boy opposed to any kind of retaliation against iran 
I think many Israelis had supported some sort of retaliation, but there's also a growing consensus in Israel that like nuclear power plants. Saturday, if they would attack, yeah, it's, it's already been done. It's already done. done. Their weapon, by the US weapon. It's five in the morning Israel right now in Tehran. Um, the sun's going to come up Iran. soon. Uh, so that that, 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 that attack is already over. It was a major strategic victory yeah. for Israel. They also proved that their arrow arrows. Yeah, and that it's the information war now. It's the information war now. Yeah. Um, if they attack, it's already done because they're not going to attack. And wait for another opportunity, yeah. or that there will be the much smaller footprint type of retaliate, retaliatory attacks, cyber attacks, or the targeted strikes against uh, Iranian commanders uh, outside of Iraq. Uh, of Iran, um, that apparently is not the case. They chose to make a direct response. Uh, it seems to be somewhat limited in scope at this point, so it's not in any way on the same scale as Iran's. But still, this is this is interesting. I think the first time in history that. Israel Sounds like they're trying to walk that tightrope, doesn't it? To Iranian territory and been essentially public about it, Lindsay. And of course, I want to see that breaking news about the implications of that on a wider scale. Matt Gutman, our thanks to you reporting in from Tel Aviv. Want to bring in our James Longman, who's in Lebanon. And James, what are you hearing on the ground there? <laughs> Well, look, Lindsay, I think a lot of people were expecting that if there was going to be a response, it could be here in Lebanon. And so far, that hasn't happened. But there has essentially been a war uh, ongoing since uh, since October 7th between Hezbollah you know and Israel. You know how difficult that flight is to, to fly um, from Israel so to that Iran? Is the main issue. I mean, you have to fly uh, to Jordan or Syria uh, to Iraq. Get actively involved in, I mean, in a war just, with Israel. That is, look, sir, that is, is really uh, difficult. Iran's largest and most powerful proxy. And then you got to fight through the radar. I remember when I was in Iraq, that ran, you know, when our aircraft fly. There's a flight that fly north, north and south, north and south, like this, on the border. I forgot what the name that 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 corridor. There's a corridor that that the U.S. used to fly. Um, uh, Man, every time, every uh, time, this war, they always, uh, always about you know, need to have you know, the AWACS guys the or the, uh, to support Hamas, um, uh, supporting the, the J-Star guy fly over those things, man. Not wanting to get um, more involved the, the radar in sensors war. just lit just everything, but you could see him, it uh, all if, the way down uh, if the corridor. The gets, oh, yes. Uh, Israel yeah. chooses to respond to these So what's weird is not one, not one news channel is showing anything about Israel. Uh, on when, if you, CNN, NBC, Fox, CNN. I said nobody, nobody has are talking about it. Really? Yeah, it's not even in the it's not even in, on the paper news. So, though. yeah. So well, that's kind of weird. It's the information war. They're trying to keep some stuff. They're trying to keep the knowledge out of the uh, public eye, so to speak. Yeah, none of the main news on. Your television has it. Has anybody checked the BBC or uh, Sky News out of uh, Great Britain? So in Google News right now, all they talk about is Mike Johnson's arrest protest in Columbia University. Nothing uh, yeah. about Iran. Okay, it's just it's just now hitting CNN that is now starting to talk about it. Oh, really? Just yeah, now. just right now, CNN just went live with it. is fine. The cause of this explosion is still unknown. Let's bring in CNN international diplomatic editor, Nick Robertson. He's in Jerusalem. So, so, Nick, what do we know about this? Yeah, John, we've been tracking a number of reports that have been coming out of a number of locations in Iran over the past several hours. And this is the first time now that the Iranian news agency, FARS, is confirming that explosions have been heard around Isfahan, several hundred miles away from Tehran. But this uh, city is a city that has multiple military bases around it, but also has one of Iran's principal nuclear research facilities. Yeah. No, the details of precisely where these explosions are being reported, but we are seeing other details indicative tonight of what may de be developing in the skies above oh. Iran. Oh. We know that interesting. Uh, hey guys, what I'm going to do is let me stop my live stream first, and uh, and we can talk some more in Discord while I edit the video. So this is a lot of interesting 
uh, sequence of events that happened during my live stream. So, uh, you know, we, we want to stay with uh, stay with talking about finance and money. I'm just curious to hear the news. Uh, so that's all I want to talk about. My YouTube channel is focused on finance and money. We don't do politics. We don't do wars. We don't do any of that stuff. It is just happened to be breaking news, and so I'm clicking on it. Uh, that's all it is. But I, I, that's not what my YouTube channel is about. It's about money, making money, getting rich, and that's what we want. All right, with that, hey, I want to say thank you, everyone, for watching, and I appreciate it. I'll still be around, but I'll be in Discord, and so I'm not doing live streaming anymore. Hey, thank you. Peace out, everyone. Take care. All right, man.